This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... FreeStateProject.org slash Liberty Forum. FreeStateProject.org slash Liberty Forum. forever and uh, if if uh, if you cut the increase a little bit and not increase the budget quite as much they get hysterical because it's a cut but it isn't a cut the trillion dollars you're talking about is a cut and I think that's what is necessary and you won't get economic growth back again until you recognize this and you get rid of the debt you have to liquidate the debt and you have to liquidate what they call malinvestment that is when you're when a business community is deceived by artificially low interest rates by the Federal Reserve, what tends to happen are bubbles are built and overbuilding occurs, you know, maybe too many houses are built and, and too many hotels and shopping centers, and you have to clear that market, and the sooner you clear it, the better. But yeah, I'm going to add to that, you know, the, the uh, cutting spending and cut where it's most easily to cut, and that to me is overseas. A safety for us. So I think we got into trouble even before 9-11. But the argument right after 9-11 wasn't so much that we needed to improve things, which I agreed we did need to improve things, but uh, the only argument went on should, uh, should we have the government hire private companies or should we just have the government agents, you know, do it. And one to me seemed like socialism, the other one seemed like fascism. Where Get rid of all these uh, government agencies and uh, you know drastically change things. And through the years, a lot of people, uh, either good or bad, have come to you know they, they need these jobs. And it is an industry in itself, or you know big bureaucracy, and it, and it does support a lot of people, a lot of jobs, and it's part of the economy. So for you to change that, um, how do you transition? Uh, such a drastic change, and what do you do with all these people in the meantime? You're talking about government employees in yeah. Washington, D.C., and Department of Education. Yeah. Well, uh, in, in the military, we don't need as many people in the military, but I, don't, I bring them home, let them spend their money at home, which would be an economic boom, but there would be attrition with all these organizations, but some would be laid off. But, you know, if you have a free market and you uh, bring people out of government, and they do productive work, you know, it's a, help, it's a help to the economy, it doesn't hurt the economy. And the one example that you can think about and not be fearful of having people coming out of the government and go into the, mar the marketplace, if you have a healthy economy. It was after <laughs> sending a trillion dollars. Uh, well, as it stands right now, the, uh, the unemployment rate for, for veterans is several points higher than the national average. And I am in favor of, uh, of your stance on bringing, bringing our uh, troops home, closing some of these spaces that we don't need. And I guess it's kind of a follow-up to that, where I think uh, the veterans of the military should be held to a higher standard as far as uh, finding unemployment after they come home. Uh, what, what's your, uh, you know, your, your thought process on the short-term short goal yeah. of doing this? 
You know, once again, I have a great deal of sympathy for your suggestion. Uh, if, if you look at my re re voting record for 30 years, off and on in those 30 years, uh, I voted for very, very few appropriations or authorizations because I just worried about what was coming. But I always voted for veterans' benefits. You know, whether or not you should have sort of like an affirmative action program for uh, people coming home or not raises raises some question. I'm very sympathetic to that, and maybe something short term, but really. Um, it, it, what what, uh, what it could do is uh, you know put pressure on a businessman to pick and choose, and he might not want to pick and choose. I like really freedom of choice and making these decisions, and I don't think we'd have that problem if we had the conditions improved. Like uh, our conditions are much worse today than they were after World War II. Finally, we had corrected so many mistakes, and there was a lot of needs, and there were plenty of jobs. I'd much prefer that to be worked out. Uh, you know, uh, voluntarily. What I think should be done, and, and there is some of this, but it's just so overwhelming, and that is job training to make sure that they're capable. Even today, there are jobs going begging uh, because uh, uh, they're not trained. We don't have the training uh, to do some of these jobs, so some business people are actually looking for uh, foreign workers that are better trained, so we, we could help in that area. But that is a major problem, but when you think about uh, how many people that are coming back that are having medical problems and mental problems and, and just think of the uh, many amputees that come back, it just tears my heart out to, to see that happening. And you think, well, oh, there's only 40,000 of the wounded, but 40,000 times 10 because they probably affect 10 people in their family and, and, and everybody's involved. The three cents uh, to the dollar that the Federal Reserve inherited. Inflation is here, and yet it's still the most trusted currency in the world. So it doesn't say much about the yen and the euro. And uh, I, I like some of the